headache is a pain in the head. Why migraines are neurological condition which make someone to experience severe pain in the head. I'm Ilo Ogwanimi. Welcome you to Ask the Doctor. Today on Ask the Doctor, we'll be looking at headaches and migraines. But before we talk more on this, or before I introduce my guest to you, let's go on the short break. And after this break, we're going straight to our health tips. See you after this time out. Wow, welcome back. If you just joined us, the program is Ask the Doctor, and today we'll be looking at headache. Our guest today is not a person, in fact, he's a familiar person in the house. He's not a person that Dr. David Wemi Ogwebine. He is the medical director of Indian Pain Center, Wari Delta State, Nigeria. Dr. David, you're welcome to the program. Thank you very much for having and me. It's nice, nice having you today. Well, I'm glad to be back here. Okay, so wh what is the cause of headache before we talk about the types because you heard about the definition before we talk about the types let's know the cause first okay um well generally speaking um, headaches can be caused by stress um, stress could be one of the causes of headache you know people are really really stressed out at work some people mental stress you know they are thinking a whole lot thinking too much and all that stuff when i say stress including mental and physical stress okay right. emotional emotional stress, stress. yeah Maritally. Any, yeah any kind of stress financial financial stress definitely that's probably <laughs> one of the most um, common causes of headache in adults but um, yeah any kind of stress could cause headaches then there's some other stuff like um dehydration what that simply means is if you don't take enough water in a day you could actually be having headaches from time to time then sometimes starvation as well you know when someone eaten. yeah you haven't eaten hunger you know so basically not just stress in your mind but even physical stress that affects your body as well you can also see that um, dehydration the stress on the body hunger that stress in the body so um all can, can can cause headaches actually and also there are different illnesses that could can cause, cause headache. headache okay then we're going to the type before we go to the type you said something like dehydration yeah. so how how, so how many liter of water, of water are we supposed okay. to take a day oh, generally speaking um we have different um, parameters for men and for women okay. for men we usually advise that they take at least about three between three three point two liters of water daily wow. so that's the daily intake okay, in for men okay then what about for women? women usually it's about um 2.7 liters okay. so that should be the like you should take 2.7 liters yeah. why do men should take three liters yeah, what three about three children liters. um children it's not um we r it's not really defined per se. Obviously, a child cannot take as much water as um, the adults would take. But generally speaking, when children they eat and then they drink water, the water they take for a normal child is usually more than enough for them. You know, they are a little bit different from adults. Adults, we just go about a day, we're so stressed out and you know running around. So sometimes we forget to take it's water. Like um, yeah, because we know for a child, whenever it's thirsty, it cries out, you know, and then it takes water. <laughs> but, you know, for like an adult, it gets thirsty and then it thinks like, oh, let me bear it a little bit more. And, you know, I have more important things to do than drinking water. Or I don't want to go pee all the time, so I don't want to take water. Yes, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, all of that happens with um, adults. But for children, they really don't care. They don't mind, you know, yanking their moms and saying, I want to go to the bathroom <laughs> like every five minutes. You know, so <laughs> they'll take um, enough water, actually. Okay. But taking water with diets is actually um, really important. Okay, you were making mention of some illness that causes headache. So what are, as in, wh what are, no, we have, let's go for the, okay, you said some illness causes headache, yeah. like what? Um, there are some illnesses that could cause headaches uh, from malaria, um, typhoid, um, hypertension. Yeah, you know, so these are just a few examples. You, when 
you have them, one of the symptoms you get will be headaches. Okay. So let us know the types. What are the types of headache? Um, there are several types actually. We have the normal, uh, regular headache, you know, from when maybe you have malaria and then you just feel this slight pain in your head, you know, that happens. We have um, cluster headaches. Sometimes we have a migraine headache, you know, so that's just to mention um, three, you know, so headache is, I think for most adults, they would say it's quite common or small. For some people, they would say it's like a regular lifestyle, you know, every day I come back from work, I have a headache, you know, I... No, but when it's different. constantly, don't yeah. you think the patient need to visit the doctor? Yes, yes, definitely. Headaches could also be symptoms of something more severe. If someone has a brain tumor, for instance, the person can begin to have headaches. Constant headache. Exactly, constant headaches, severe headaches. And if you just push it aside and say, oh, it's just a headache, before you know, it could lead to something more um, severe, you know, and uh, um, symptoms could be all blown out before you know to go see a doctor. So sometimes if you have constant headaches and it's reoccurring, it's a sign that you should actually see a doctor. Yes. Like you, you said about you said one of the types is uh, migraine. Okay. Yeah, migraine. Okay. We all know that migraine are neurological or uh, neurological condition that make people experience headache. Yeah. So can you tell us the symptom or the cause? Let's know the causes of migraine. Okay. Um, basically, what happens with migraine is that you have a headache, but it's not the regular headache that you get. You get a headache and it's severe it's really s painful, really strong. A lot of people describe it as a throbbing pain or pulsating pain. What that means, you've had some people complain like, I have a headache and in my head I feel like vroom, vroom. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, you know, so when people get migraine. Well, actually some people don't know, I don't think is, is everybody know the difference between, between migraine, migraine and, and headache. Um, oh. Believe me, when you have a migraine, you know that this is not a normal headache. It's way more painful and more severe. And one of the main signs of a migraine is that it affects like just a part of the head. So if someone is having a migraine today, he could feel the pain like on just on this half. Will it get from the, the, the head to the, the eyes? eyes? Yeah, so. yeah, it does actually. So they feel like just on this half or maybe the other half. So it's not like um, whenever I have a migraine, it must be on the right side every time. So for the same person, the person could have it on the right side today, and then the next time, the person could have it on the left side. So one of the basic signs you know that this headache I'm having, it's totally different from the normal headache. Migraine is totally different from the normal headache. It's the pain. It's more severe. Yeah, more severe. Some people refer to it as throbbing pain or pulsing, pulsating pain then the pattern of the pain, one-sided. Then when people get headaches, they get to a point where they begin to feel, when they get migraine, I mean, they begin to feel nauseous. They feel like vomiting. Sometimes they might even vomit. Then, with migraine. yeah, with migraine. Then also with migraine, what's one of the things they also experience is what we call photophobia. What that means is they are sensitive to light. So any light that is shining in their faces, it causes severe discomfort and severe pain. Is it, is, it, is it only in migraine, but headache to at that way? Um, with the regular headache or with cluster headaches, you could um, get that sometimes, but the intensity... It, okay, with regular headaches, it comes today, maybe um, the light might just disturb you a little bit, but the severity of the photophobia, it's one of the normal pattern with migraine. So when someone has migraine, it's the person will most likely have um, photophobia. So high sensitivity to light. The light shining in the eyes is causing severe pain. What about sound? Sound, yeah, also. So the person does not want to be anywhere close to loud sound or sometimes any kind of sound. The person is highly irritable. So from sound to um, the presence of other people to you even trying to touch the person sometimes the person just like reacts like really really um, bad to that yeah that person could flare up so yeah those are some of the signs you see and symptoms and you know that okay this is more than just a normal headache this is a migraine okay. is it every pain one is feeling that person can say that uh, this is migraine or person said this headaches is it every pain okay you mean um, pain in the head no not necessarily there are sometimes when we have um, 
pain in the head it's superficial let's say someone like it's just on the surface you're not feeling it inside basically you're just feeling it on the surface for women sometimes you know when they make their hair yeah <laughs> when they make their hair or the braid and stuff like that, you do sometimes they'll tell you i'm having pains you know on my head but it's not and only when they, some people when they don't make their hair yeah, carrying a natural hair they'll still be having yeah. such yeah sometimes like we mentioned we talked about stress um, triggering headache and stress could also be one of the triggers for migraine. So for someone, a woman for instance, that usually gets migraine, when she stresses herself by probably, you know, like um, um, braiding her hair and stuff like that, doing something stressful to the hair, that could actually trigger a migraine. Headaches. Yeah, trigger migraine. What yeah. about headaches? Well, head usually if the person is healthy and the person is okay, most of the time, you know. You might just have like superficial pain on the surface of the hair. That means like I touch it and you know, okay, oh, there's pain. But with headaches, it's not you're not supposed to have pain with touch. So it's inside, not just on the outside. You get so that okay, okay, okay. Let's go to um I are they after you mentioned some symptoms. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to hereditary now. Oh uh, are they uh, headaches? Is it hereditary? Um, generally speaking, no. But for migraine, migraine, it's a type of headache that, yes, sometimes it's hereditary. So it could be genetic. You could notice that um, maybe a father will tell you that, oh, I used to have like severe headaches, you know, and with this pain in probably half of my head, one side of my head, and all of that. And the child becomes an adolescent, and in the 20s and in the 30s, and then complaining of the same thing. By the way, headaches are, I'm sorry, migraine are usually the onset, like I mentioned before, it's adolescent, but the peak is usually when um, patients are in their 30s. So when they are 30s, in their 30s, that's when they feel it the strongest. And then that's when they feel it the more, more often, more often. And usually migraines, unlike um, simple headaches, they last for about four to 72 hours. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yes. More than two days. Um, yeah, actually, it's more. Three it's three more than days. yeah, about three days. So you, the person could, like I said, if you have when you have a migraine, you know this is migraine because when you have like a regular headache, it doesn't last that long, and you take like a simple um, painkiller, paracetamol, or whatever, and you're good. Or sometimes if you rest. Yeah, exactly. Rest. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes if it's caused by dehydration, you just take a lot of water, you rest, you wake up, and you're as good as new. But with migraine, it's not that easy. Yeah, at all. And migraines also mostly common in women. Okay. How can okay, you said only when someone is having pain from one side of the head, yeah. that person knows it's migraine. Not just that, with all the other symptoms I mentioned. One sided head one -sided pain, pain, severe pain. pain. Yeah, the pain has it's actually severe. It's throbbing or pulsating pain. Okay. Yeah. Then the person feels nauseous. It means that you feel like vomiting. Sometimes the person even vomits. Then sometimes or most of the time, the person has sensitivity to light, photophobia. And even sound. Yeah, and sound as well. What about children? Um, for children, sometimes when they have like uh, malaria and other illnesses, they will complain that they have a headache. You know, I complain, mommy, my head, my head, but and all of that. A parent is noticing, as in if a mother, if a mother is noticing a child, all this complaint of headache, I think you need to take the child for... Yes, yeah. definitely. You have to take the child to the hospital. But in children, it's most likely not migraine. Migraine, like I said before, the onset is usually adolescent, like late teens down to early 20s. So most children would not have migraine. If a child is complaining of severe pain in the head for a long period of time, then first thing, take the child to the hospital because it could be that maybe the, the child hits the head somewhere or as a result of, you know, playing um, actively or rough play, you know, or maybe someone pushes the child, they hit the head or something. So it could be also be a sign of something more serious. Like you could have like um, tumors and cancer in children and all of that. So if to make sure it's not something severe, something very, very That's serious, right. you might have to take a child to the hospital. Yes. Okay. So let's um, let's talk about uh, let, what are those things that trigger uh, migraines and headaches. Okay. Um, we already talked about the ones for the regular headaches. We have illnesses like malaria, typhoid. We have um, dehydration. We have stress. 
we have um, like starvation or hunger and all that for the normal headache. But for migraine, it's actually totally different. Because for migraine, there are one of the major things we try to point out for migraine is that we tell patients they are triggers to migraine. So try as much as possible to know what specifically is triggering migraine for you. Some of the triggers are a whole lot actually. Some of the triggers for migraine in people could be, okay, let's take them one at a time. Let's look at food. For some people, a particular kind of food could actually trigger migraine. Yeah, for some people, it's in um, cheese, for instance, could actually trigger migraine in some people, mostly like old cheese. And some people can actually trigger migraine in some people. Then you're looking at drinks, like alcohol could trigger migraine in some people. Um, substances that are highly caffeinated could trigger migraine for some people, whether they're Actually, drinks or food. Lack of sleep. Um, lack of sleep could lead to the normal headache uh. for most people, not having enough rest, stress. Then for migraine also, not sleeping properly could trigger migraine in some people. So stress and um, not having enough rest could also be one of the triggers. And there are some other triggers that people, like we're talking about um, drinks, um, caffeinated drinks could trigger for some people, wine, red wine could trigger headache for uh, migraine for some people. Um, that's when it comes to food. Then sometimes um, sen things that have to do with our senses, for instance, we mentioned light. When some, for some people, like when there's like the sun is like, it's the noon of the day and they stay into the sun. You know, that light could actually trigger um, migraine for them. For some other people, they could be in a loud place with a lot of loud music, maybe like in a music concert or something. That could actually trigger migraine for them. For some other people, it could be drugs, a particular kind of drug that they ought to take. Okay. So for someone who is taking oral contraceptive drugs, it could actually trigger migraine in some people. There are some hypertensive drugs that could also trigger migraine in some people. But one thing we have to note is this. What could trigger migraine for you could be totally different from what's triggering migraine okay. for me. Individual. Individuals have their different, different. triggers. Okay. You get it. So someone could, um, someone's, okay, I had a patient once and a trigger was basically stress, but mostly traveling. Whenever she travels and she gets to wherever she's going, it's like she just goes into the room. She, she, she can't even sleep because the pain is so severe. She just goes down and cries and cries and make sure the windows are shut and the curtains are drawn because she doesn't want any light. She doesn't want anyone around. She doesn't want any sound when if she just stays there and she takes all the drugs. Take um, that's, that's the thing. Like that, like someone like me, if I travel, even if as in a short distance yeah when i get to my destination i like taking drugs because i'm feeling pain um, um yeah there are some drugs that you can that's um one of the problems with migraine is that they don't easily respond to drugs like normal like the normal regular headache is it what would be with the, with the person all through his or life um in like we already mentioned onset adolescence it peaks at in the 30s for most people when they're getting into like their 40s and then late 40s and before they get into the 50s or 50s thereabouts it actually just goes off by itself you know they don't have the headache anymore they don't have the migraine anymore but not for everybody though but it varies from person to person but for a lot of people as they get older the symptoms begin to die down and stops at some point well, obviously, if you just joined us, the program is Ask the Doctor, and today we've been looking at headaches and migraines. Or if you just, if you have a question concerning this topic or any health issue, do give us a call on the numbers on your screen. Sit there, we'll be right back.
Welcome back. If you just joined us, the program is Ask the Doctor, and today we've been looking at headaches and migraines. Uh, doctor, with the uh, things you, you mentioned before we went on the break, yeah. all things that trigger headaches, headaches and migraines. migraines. Okay, what are the signs? Because early detection matters a lot. Uh, so, yeah. what are the signs when we watch it for before we conclude that this is migraine or this just a common uh, headache? Okay. Um, yeah, like I said, early detection is actually um, a key thing when it comes to, mostly when it comes to migraine. Because one of the things we advise people to do with migraine is to try as much as we know what the trigger is and avoid it. Oh, okay. So that works, basically. It's one of the easiest things to do. Because, like I said, they don't respond to drugs easily like the regular headache. So try to know what the trigger is and avoid it. So early detection is quite good. So generally you want to know. Is there a history of migraine in my family? You know, is it genetic? If while you were growing up, you had your parents complaining about migraine, and, you know, like severe pain in the head, one-sided with photophobia and nausea and vomiting and all of that, then you want to know that, okay, there's a possibility that I could get it. So you want to start, you know, preparing yourself for that. You want to start preparing yourself. Then, when it comes to migraine, another th um, major difference from migraine and the more regular headache or common headaches is that there's what we call an aura. Yeah, so when someone um, usually gets migraine, sometimes before they get the migraine, they have what we call the aura. It's like, it comes in different ways. For some people, there was, it could, they could just be in a normal place and they would see something like a flash of light in their faces, in their eyes rather. So this is, it's like a flash of light. When they begin to see that, for someone who's already used to it, when they begin to see that, it knows that, oh, okay, a migraine might just be coming up. Therefore, some other people, they see some like, um, like shapes, like irregular shapes in their vision whenever you know, they're looking around. When they see that, they know that, oh, a migraine might be coming up. For some other people, they might have like a sensation. It might have like this, tingling sensation maybe one side of the face or something like that so they feel it and then they know that okay a migraine could be coming up so these are one of some of the warning signs that okay a migraine might just be coming up some people they feel the sensation in their arms or you know in their legs sometimes but whenever they feel that after that they get a migraine okay according to you said we should avoid things that trigger yeah, migraine. Yeah, yeah. Okay, what about a patient that, according to you, said whenever she travels, yeah. she experiences such. So how can she avoid this? We say, will she stop traveling because uh, um, of her medical condition? Okay, in some cases, what the people can do is they look for a more comfortable way to travel. For some of them, they notice that it's when they travel long distance. So sometimes, just look for a comfortable way to travel easier. Instead of traveling by road, that would take like... Yeah. Well, it's not everybody that can afford Definitely, that's what I say for some people. Yeah, so instead of traveling by road, that could take maybe like six, seven, eight hours getting to wherever you're going to, you could take a 30 minutes flight and then try to rest. And in some of those cases, what they can do is they try to make sure they get enough rest the day before they travel. And even before they start traveling, they could already start with their um, painkillers. You know, yeah, you pink. And it's not everybody that can, is, and they should afford self medication in that angle. Well, um, generally speaking, I would advise if you notice that you've been having migraine, get to see your doctor so they can know exactly, they can help you guide, they can help guide you in pinpointing what your trigger is and avoiding it and then giving you the best drug depending on how severe your migraine usually is. But generally speaking, when people have migraine, they can definitely go to a pharmacy and get over-the-counter um, pain medications and adjust How long does it last when someone is treating it? How long does it last? Oh. Would the person be on drug all through <laughs> his or lifetime? Um, how long does it last? Well, like we already talked about the triggers. So yes. one of the things we need to understand is that it's a lifestyle changing it's approach. Lifestyle changing approach. Yeah, yeah, so know what the trigger is, avoid it. Okay, know what the trigger is. Avoid and then avoid it. it. Oh. So when you know what the trigger is and you avoid it, even if you get migraines, it's going to be less, like the frequency. Oh, okay. So instead of being in a situation where you usually get migraine like once every month, you might just end up having it once a year. 
or once in two years, you know, so know what it is and then avoid it. And the answer to the question is no, you don't have to be on drug for the rest of your life. With, unlike some other chronic illnesses, with migraine, what we usually do is you take the drug when the migraine comes. Well, first if you just join this program, is ask the doctor. And we've been looking at headache and migraine. Uh, doctor said we know what triggers your headache or migraine. So do well by avoiding it. Well, doctor, thank you very much for being our guest today. I'm glad to be here. Uh, that's a wrap to my free my program, Ask the Doctor. I'm in the of one But well, I'm not done yet. I'm leaving you with our nutritional value segment. Bye. Benefits of honey. One of the earliest evidence of honey harvesting was found on a rock painting dating 8,000 years back in Valencia. Spain shows a honey seeker robbing a wild bee colony. In the Old Testament, the land of Israel was found referred to as land flowing of milk and honey. Humans have eaten honey, baited in it, fixed their wounds, and traded with it since history was recorded. The benefits of one of the oldest sweeteners on earth have included it in the list of power foods that should be in every kitchen. Honey prevents cancer and heart disease due to its flavonoids and the oxidants, which help reduce the risk of some cancer and heart disease. They also reduce ulcer and other gastrointestinal disorders, as recent research shows that honey treatment may help disorders such as ulcer and bacterial gastroenteritis. All honey is antibacterial and antifungal because the bees had an enzyme that makes hydrogen peroxide, 